It's a really big spider. Luckily today we are moving to another location. So, good. But this place is still beautiful despite this giant spider. Also it's six in the morning. Day nine. Dear Journal, it is yet another early morning for us as it is yet again time to pack our luggage and head out to the next camp way over yonder. This time to Camp Savuti, a sister location to Camp Lignanti. Though getting there was a bit of a challenge, for our rover, due to how soft the sandy road was, could only move at a speed of approximately 3 miles per hour, but we eventually pulled through. The land surrounding the area of Savuti was much more open and spacious, resembling that of a savanna, but with much more sand. Upon arriving at the campsite, we can see our tents from the road. They already look very spacious and comfy to sleep in. As soon as we dropped off our luggage, we instantaneously headed back out again in search of predatorial animals since we haven't seen much of the sort yet. We hope to see lions or leopards eventually. With the morning safari, we found that the animals are more spread out than we realize, though much of the large herbivores were still easily visible. Plenty of elephant, giraffe, and antelope grazing and browsing on the land. There were even some jackals resting within the shade of a tree. Not exactly the predatorial animal we're looking for, but a good start nonetheless. Of course, being in Botswana still, aka the heart of elephant country, elephants were still the easiest animal to spot on our journey, for they have a steadily growing population in this region due to how protected the land is. Subsequently, with this land being protected in conservation efforts, other smaller, lesser known animals that live alongside the elephants are also protected to the same degree. This is why the megafauna is known as an umbrella species. So birds like hornbills and cory bustards and many other species of mammals can live in peace knowing that their land will be protected thanks to the great conservation effort of the elephants themselves.
A little later on in the safari, we encountered a huge herd of elephants that was gathered around a waterhole. Jackals were also running around about nearby as well. It appeared to be a herd consisting of only males, which indicates this whole herd is one large bachelor group, the largest that I've seen so far. This is indeed literally tons and tons of elephants standing right in front of us right here. These guys made some really nice photo ops for all of us. Each picture telling its own story of what's happening. Observe elephants long enough and you'll soon see distinctive personalities in every individual. Also, you'll begin to see a distinctive pecking order within the herd, where smaller individuals would have to make way for larger elephants. We then pushed on with the safari, keeping vigil for any signs of big cats, but still didn't catch a glimpse of one as of yet. We caught sightings of many other species, but for carnivores, it was pretty much zero throughout the morning. Hi everyone, this is Caitlin reporting live from the Savuti camp in Botswana and I just wanted to interview a few people to tell you what we saw yesterday on safari. Say hi group. Hi. Okay, so Trista, what was one of the coolest things that you saw yesterday? An aardvark. And what was your reaction? It's a f***ing aardvark. <laughs> Okay, Gray um, and Mad, or er, I'm sorry, Vicky. <laughs> what, what, what else? The um, the badgers, two of them. Two honey badgers, Gray, and there was one more rare sighting that we saw. That was the southern ground hornbill. Yes. So, on safari, you could probably come ten times and never see those animals. So I'm so glad that my group got to see it. Ian, anything you'd like to say? Um. Yeah, the experience that I liked the most about yesterday's experience was the mock charge of the elephants oh, that yep. we had. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, this is my group signing off. Bye. Bye. So, how are you enjoying reading my journal so far? It's amazing. Look at his cool elephant. Yeah, look at that.
because we saw so many elephants yes. yesterday and, and today and today as well yes. I figured I should put a little bit of art in there so yeah we are at Camp Savuti Savuti right now and uh, we're about to go on another safari in a less than a half hour and there's a random truck going down that roadway there but, but yeah all set for the next one coming real soon yep When an elephant comes to say hello at the campsite you're residing at, that's when you truly realize you are indeed in the wild. see some lions as well as leopards and many other carnivorous species but first we're gonna go up to the rocks to see the rock paintings of ancient yeah ancient time like cave paintings rock paintings. is it like like paintings like that that's gonna be really cool to see so we'll check back in a little while we made it our mission to find big cats before the day was through and so we went out again for the afternoon with high hopes that we would see at least one individual. Also this wildebeest was looking at us funny. At the start of the afternoon safari, we arrived at a large rocky hill to which then we got out of the safety of our rover to follow a footpath that led to a spot on the mountain face where ancient pictures were painted. It was a bit treacherous of a climb, but we made it to where the paintings were easily visible. A depiction of a kudu, an elephant, and a sable antelope was seen. Bushmen are the one because were the first inhabitants of this this area before the Bantus came. Jerry explained how native tribesmen would paint what they hunted on the rock face as a record keeping strategy. Amazing to see something from another time still visible to this day etched into the rock. And now for the tricky part climbing back down. <laughs> Don't worry guys, it's fine. Just be one with the rock. Go on ahead. <laughs> What'd you say that was the most exercise you had since since what? Since pushing that Mercedes in the airport. Oh yes. <laughs> After 
passing by a giant baobab tree, we spent a very long while searching for predators of the land, finding a vast array of biodiversity along the way. We did come across another honey badger, which was cool, as well as another species of antelope known as a cespi, which sort of looked like a topi antelope from another region we visited three years prior. But still, no matter how hard we tried, there seemed to be no sign of a hyena or a cat anywhere. The probability of seeing a predator started to seem pretty bleak as the sun began to set, creating silhouettes out of every plant and animal that surrounded us. It was a beautiful sight to see every leaf and needle of the acacia trees be outlined in the crystal light of the sun. Even if we didn't get the opportunity to spot a big cat, this view was still as beautiful nonetheless.
finally, just before dusk, lying in the branches of a large acacia tree, we finally found what we were looking for. It was a huge sigh of relief for everyone to finally see a big cat on this trip. A beautiful leopard seemingly watching the sunset along with everyone else. Always being vigilant and planning the next move for when hunting begins again. We then booked it back to camp fast, for night was steadily approaching. Until the next entry, this is Ian, signing off for now. P.S. There was an elephant eating tree branches literally just outside my tent. That was the coolest thing ever.